Hi everybody. Today we are going to be looking at and implementing the book Many Masterpieces, Exploring Art History with Hands-On Projects for Kids by Laura Lohman. But you may know her better as Painted Paper Art on social media. I have followed Laura for a very long time on social media and have had the pleasure of interacting with her through social media, in person, and she is awesome. And her work is beautiful. She does some great things with kids, and this book is amazing. So get on Amazon and find it for yourself today. I like the way that this book is laid out. Like, it's just done very, very well. Hi, Laura. <laughs> it tells you how to use the book. It shows you supplies that you'll need. 10 tips for preparing your creative space. I mean, this is just a very well thought out book with lots of great information for artists at home and art teachers at school. Temper paint information, materials you might need for painted paper. Color wheel, and then starts the project. Isn't that gorgeous? We're not doing that one today, but that's gorgeous. Love it. So today, what we are gonna be doing, and of course I lost the page. That's okay, you can flip with me to see the other gorgeous projects in the book. Ah, here it is. This is honestly one of the first projects I remember seeing online and associating it with Laura. And this is called Flower Bouquet. It is inspired by Roses from 1894. Now, I actually went on YouTube and looked this artist up to, to learn a little bit more about her. And the people that were speaking on the YouTube video called her Bert. It's B-E-R-T-H-E. -E. I would have said birth, but they called her Bert. I don't know. But her last name is Morisot. It's French, M-O-R-I-S-O-T. She is the same time period as Mary Cassatt and the other Impressionists. But beautiful work, amazing. You need to go look it up and see more of what she creates. Um, be great to bring another female artist into your repertoire that you use in your classroom. Now in the book, it does give you a paragraph here about the artist. It has the necessary supplies for the project with picture included. And then it has step-by-step -step instructions on how to create the project, which is super handy dandy. Like I said, this is great for at home if you're homeschooling or just have creative kids that need some direction. This is great for art teachers in the classroom that are looking to bring in some more art history and some other projects they may not be doing presently. And this is also really great for those out there that may not have art teachers in their schools. I grew up in rural Appalachia, Ohio, Southeastern Ohio, and we did not have art teachers. So this would be a great book for classroom teachers that really want to infuse art into their curriculum. So multifaceted, great for everybody. All right, let's get started. So she recommends having a mat. Now I grabbed a black piece of paper my mats kind of have clay on them right now, so I didn't want to wash them and wait for it to dry. <laughs> so I grabbed a piece of paper. Use what you have. Um, you can use pieces of paper without them being laminated. Uh, you don't have to use mats. I, I think mats are great to get for your classroom though. But see, she recommended in the book that your construction paper be a square. So I cut down a paper a 12 by 18 into an 11 by 11. Now she wants to start off with a round brush 
in black to draw. I know it's scary drawing with black paint. What if I mess up? That's the great thing about being an artist. Creatively figuring out how to fix your mess ups. All right, so I'm drawing the vase. And then I'm gonna put varying sizes of circles. Ooh, that one has a really thick <laughs> line. I think that'll be okay. Do kind of a medium sized circle. Now really, you can have your students do as many circles as you want. Might be dictated on the size of your brushes and the size of the paper that your students are using, okay? But there's some variation that can happen within this. She recommends, I believe, five in the book. And then I'm gonna put a line across for my table because we wanna ground the vase. We don't want the vase floating off into space. And then we're gonna put some leaves around. Now, if your artists are struggling, like, oh, I don't know how to make a leaf, you can have them make ovals you can have them make a football shape. I teach my kindergartners, make a sad face, make a happy face to make that football shape leaf. But, you know, you may have your own tips and tricks that you will use with your students. There we go. And then in this project, she does not list a water cup at all. She recommends just brushing out your color in certain areas. So for the black, she said brush it out at the bottom on the table. get most of that color out. Now you'll eventually want to wash that out for sure, but for now, we can just set it off to the side. Now I'm going to be taking my palette and picking up some white. And I switched over to a medium sized flat brush. And I'm going to brush the white onto the table. Now, Laura recommends not overdoing it so that some of your construction paper color will show through. I think that's a great idea. Now remember, we are looking at the work of an impressionist. So they're very brushy, like, <laughs> that sounds ridiculous. Brushy, they use lots of uh, brush marks and stuff in their work that's incorporated, it's a part of their art. So, you don't have to worry about smoothing everything out just so, so perfect. And it's okay if we let some colors show through here and there. Like if for some reason some of the black shows through, that's okay. The purple shows through, that is okay. No worries. Especially with temper paint. Like if we have any boo-boos, we can always go back in once it's dried a little bit more and go over uh, where we've made a mistake and try to cover up our mistake, if we can incorporate it. I always try to encourage my students to incorporate mistakes into their work because sometimes that could become their favorite part of their picture. All right, I think I'm gonna leave it. Um, I have a tendency to overwork things. So I'm just gonna, I wanna stop there. I'm gonna say, done. <laughs> so that's looking cool so far. Now we are going to move on to our flowers. Now I have used yellow, magenta, and red. Now that magenta looks like more like just a regular pink, but that's what the bottle said. There are always variations from company to company. Now Laura recommends starting with the lightest color first. 
you want to paint in a semicircle. Now, don't be afraid if your color uh, comes out a little bit wonky at first. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you see those chunks? Um, I got some powdered tempera because somebody had donated a ton of uh, washable tempera to me. And the washable tempera was so thin. Um, I just really don't enjoy it. So I got some powdered tempera and mixed into it to kind of thicken it up and strengthen the color a little bit. Well, if you've ever used powdered tempera before, sometimes it's a little chunky chunky. So you may see some chunky chunky as I'm painting. So I'm putting the lighter color. Now what will happen is as that dries, it will brighten it up. So I'm going to wipe out my yellow into my background, which Laura recommended. I do have some black I picked up. I probably should have left a little bit more dry time for my black paint, or maybe I shouldn't have put so much on so thickly. I'm going to move over to my magenta. I'll put some magenta into this. And for my smaller flowers, I'm kind of using the edge of my brush. My, I'm still using the medium size flat brush. If you want to, you can switch to a different brush. I think it's nice sometimes to have a limited number of brushes that you're using. It also, for a project like an impressionist picture, it's pulling colors into places you may not have originally wanted them. And you know what? That's okay. And I think it's, it's good to teach kids that too, is it's all right if it's not exactly what you originally thought. I'm going to mix a little bit of red into this as well. Brush out this is really out of my norm. <laughs> I do not usually paint this way. I'm also more of a watercolor painter, and I do temper with my students, but I do more watercolor. So this is a little bit out of what I'm usually comfortable with. And that's good too, we need to push ourselves. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of white on my brush. I'm gonna come back in here. Of course, I don't want all of my flowers to be exactly the same. That's boring. There we go. Cute. <laughs> so I'm going to come back out here, brush out. Now, you see I've, I've made a couple boo-boos here where I went in the black. That is easy to go back and touch up because I still have my small round brush off to the side. So no big deal. All right, so I want to come into the green. Now, I only have one kind of green temper paint here in my classroom, which I was like, oh, I need to pick up another one. I usually just have my students mix their colors. Like if they want a lighter green, then I give them some yellow and they can mix. But sometimes I guess it's good to have a variety. So I've got a little bit of yellow on my brush. As you can tell, it's a little bit lighter. And I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of white, 
a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green. I'm kind of mixing a tint here. I'm gonna come back in. I'm just gonna round off one of my edges to highlight it. Like that. And then she said like put some lines out with your brush to make it look like some leaves or some other type of plants might be growing out from behind or are worked into the flower arrangement. Sorry, Laura, if that's not exactly what you meant. That's what I got from what I read. But of course, teachers don't always read very carefully. <laughs> that's fun. All right. So... Uh, the last thing uh, is the vase. Now the vase is pretty as the background color, but I picked up some tealy color here that I thought was real pretty and would look good with these colors and the purple. There's a little green in my brush and that's totally cool. Not a big deal. And there is a lot of beauty in the imperfections. So, you know, I know there are some kids that are just gonna wanna get every little spot perfect, but you know what? There is a lot of beauty in this, of, of just painting and creating and having fun and, and not worrying about everything being perfect, that you're giving that impression of a vase of flowers, just like the impressionists did in their work. Now, I love to have a lot of individuality in what my students are creating. So I would have them maybe choose some other colors. I might have them add a variety of flowers. Maybe some of them want to make all the same size flower. Maybe they might want to make their leaves a little bit different. And you know what? That is okay. Um, don't be afraid if some of your students do things differently than what you are suggesting uh, so that they can express themselves and, and bring out some of their personality in their artwork. You know, we want them to have personal choices within their work as we're teaching skills, as we're teaching elements and principles. We want them to be able to make choices and feel like they have had a voice in their creating. All right, so there is my project that I created thanks to, sorry, I bumped my iPad. Thanks to the inspiration of mini masterpieces, exploring art history with hands-on projects by Laura Lohman. Go on Amazon and order it today if you haven't already. And there's my final piece. Ta-da! <laughs> Thank you, Laura, for the inspiration. And I am excited to do this project and others with my students this year. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Bye now.